This is an introductory video to VELS, an interactive virtual environment for learning surveying concepts and practices. When the application first starts up, it will prompt for a username and password. Upon logging in, the first screen is the main menu. The main menu options include the various learning tutorials and exercises. The tutorials cover the math concepts necessary to complete the exercises. The three exercises included are the leveling exercise, the total station exercise, and the steel tape exercise. On the right side of the screen are a list of regions that can be loaded to provide a variety of different environments to practice surveying. For example, selecting the Michigan region will change the current environment at real time. This video will focus on leveling exercise. Upon startup of the exercise, the user will see empty terrain. In order to get a better idea of how to complete the exercise, there is a help screen which can be accessed by hitting the help button. This is below the mini-map in the top left corner of the screen. In addition, the help menu can be accessed by hitting the H key on the keyboard. On the left side of the screen, there is a series of pages that go more in-depth into the process of completing the exercise. On the right side of the screen is an interface window as well as a navigation window which goes into detail on the commands used to complete the exercise and navigate the environment. By hitting the H key again, the help screen will close. Following the on-screen instructions at the bottom, the exercise requires the user to select a location for the instrument. With the location selected, the instrument has been placed on the terrain and a circle indicating the range of accuracy of the instrument has been drawn. By hitting the F key on the keyboard, the camera will focus on the instrument and place its origin on its center. Hitting the F key again breaks this connection, allowing the camera to rotate about itself. Following the on-screen instructions, the exercise needs a selection of measurement points for the instrument. After a second point is selected, the user can right-click to continue on to the next screen or may proceed to place more points. Upon progression, some options have changed. In the top left corner of the screen, there are a few new progression options. In the bottom left corner of the screen, there are new camera views to select from. In the top right corner of the screen, there is now a secondary camera view. Focusing first on the perspective view, the initial view of the exercise, the instrument can rotate with the A and D keys, which can allow the user to roughly line up with the first measurement point. In the top right corner of the screen, the measurement rod is now visible, and in the top left corner of the screen, an overhead view of the direction of the instrument scope is visible. By hitting scope view on the camera view option box, the scope camera, which was originally the secondary view, is now the primary view. The new secondary view, which is a camera called Signs, provides a view of the surveyor as well as his actions when manipulating the measurement rod. The meter controls, which can be seen on the bottom right side of the screen, are used to specifically manipulate the rod. The next step is to measure the locations of the rods, but this can't be done accurately as the instrument has not been set up. The third camera view, Level Setup, allows for the setup of the instrument. By rotating the camera using the A and D keys, the three different dials which can be used to align the instrument are visible. Looking at the top right corner of the screen, the balance camera shows two different bubbles which indicate the current alignment of the instrument. It is currently not aligned, so the three dials must be adjusted to accurately set up the instrument. When the alignment of the instrument is finished, the user must proceed back to the scope view. In the scope view, the user can extend the rod to double its length if it is too short, which it isn't in this situation, and can rock the rod to get its true height. The lowest readable point is to where to stop the rod, so it can be accurately recorded in the input table. Upon finishing the measurement of all the selected points, the exercise can proceed on to the next location by hitting the Next Location button while in the perspective view. This will provide three different options. Yes will allow the user to move on to the next location. No will allow the user to proceed in the current location. And Clear will erase the current location from memory if the user decides not to use the location after all. Another progression option is to add points, which allows the addition of more measurement points at any time. When done measuring at every location that interests the user, Grade will provide the user with the final results, which is determined by the locations of the instrument throughout the exercise. The number of selected points is indicated by the number just above the grade option. A few other details of note, in all camera views, the keys A and D will rotate some version of the instrument, but in the scope view specifically, holding down the shift key will rotate the instrument more slowly. 
In the minimap, the very center of the instrument's view is indicated by a black line to further improve the accuracy outside of the scope view.